true in practice also for non-uniform PDFs, if we have enough quantization intervals. But to still have the dependencies on the PDF, for the reconstruction values yk, we have to start at the beginning um, and take the derivative of the original formulation of d. So here we are back again at the beginning. So here we now have the PDF p of x and the reconstruction values or code words yk. So in the, actually in the multidimensional case yk is called a code word. Now we start with taking the derivative with respect to the reconstruction value yk and set it to zero. So same approach as before, but now with the reconstruction values. So here we take the derivative, and this is what we now obtain if we take the derivative of this ex uh, expression with respect to yk. So we here have this quadratic function, take the derivative, and we get two times this expression here, right? So, actually we can take the derivative fairly easy, but we still have this integral here. So since the yk is only in one interval, the sum disappears. Here we just keep the element which contains the yk. So, that simplifies our expression. So now we have this, and since we have a sum, we can split this integral in two parts and remove the minus sign. So minus zero or plus zero doesn't matter, so we can just drop it. And then we just have those two terms, the x and the minus yk. So here we have the x, and here we have the minus yk. And we can also cancel the two in both sides, and we get the result that this needs to be equal to this. We can bring the yk on the other side, divide by this integral, and this is our result. yk is this integral over x times uh, the probability density function divided by the integral over the probability density function itself. So that's again kind of an interesting result because this is the expectation of x over this interval. Right? This interval between bk minus 1 to bk. And this is the probability of the interval itself, right? So basically this yk is um, a conditional probability. It's uh, the expectation of x in this interval given that we are in this interval, right? So this can be inter uh, interpreted as a conditional expectation of our signal value over the quantization interval, given the signal is in, the, in this interval, or it's also called the centroid as reconstruction value. Right? Centroid because it's kind of the center of mass uh, within this interval. Right? We have this interval which might have a somewhat dis distributed signal probability, and then the centroid is kind of the center of mass in this interval. Yeah, so the value in the numerator can be seen as the expectation value of our signal in the interval, and the denominator can be seen as a probability of that signal being in this, in this interval. Hence, it can be interpreted as, given the signal is inside the interval, this is its average or expected value. Yeah, so since the decision boundaries bk depend on the reconstruction yk, and the yk in turn depend on the bk, we need to come up with a way to compute them. And the approach for this is an iterative algorithm. Right. So here it is. So the first step is decide on m, the number of intervals, start, uh, initialize the inter in iteration with a random assignment of m reconstruction values, or code words yk. So a good initial estimation is an equal distribution of the reconstruction values. Then, using those reconstruction values, compute the boundary values bk as midpoints um, between the two reconstruction values, or code words, um, which comes from the ne nearest neighbor rule. Next, using the PDF of our signal and the boundary values bk, update or compute the new reconstruction values, or code words yk, 
as the centroids or conditional expectation over the quantization um, areas or intervals between bk and bk minus 1. Right? So when we have an unequal PDF, we have an update here. It changes the yk. And then we go back. So new VK, uh, yk means uh, different bk's, different bk's means um, new yk's. And then um, usually this algorithm converges. It finds an equilibrium and doesn't change anymore. And it results in the minimum distortion d. So this is um, a heuristic experience that it converges. It doesn't have to. Right? We have no, pr uh, no guarantee. Yeah, and for numerical integration, we can actually use um, Python, for instance. So when we have this integral in one integral, one interval from bk minus 1 to bk over f of x, um, then we can basically subdivide our x dimension into intervals. For instance, we could divide the integration interval into 100 steps. In Python, for instance, we have the dx, which would be this uh, interval divided by 100. Yeah, and then basically an interval at some point x prime can be seen as a small rectangle with area f prime, f of x prime times dx. Right? Then for each small sub uh, interval we get an area of this size and then we simply add them up. So this integral is then approximated as the sum of all these areas, all these rectangles, which you can see here in this picture. So the black line would be the PDF and you can see the finer we choose those dx the better is the approximation to the true integral. Right here, so the last picture has the best approximation, but also the finest dx, which means we need the most summations. Yeah, and um, for instance, we could use f of a range of b of k minus 1, comma bk, comma dx to find the function points for each of those intervals in Python. So for instance, if we want to integral the sine function, we would type sine of a range of 0, comma 3.14 for pi, comma 0 0.1 for dx equals 0 0.1, the smaller interval. And then we just use the sum function over all those function points and multiply everything with dx. And that gives us um, the sum of the areas as this approximation of the integral. So for instance, here in our case, we integrate from 0 to pi with steps of 0.1 and this is the result. We get 2, almost 2. So 2 would be the correct answer and here we can see we deviate a little bit and that's our approximation error basically. Right. So this is the numerical integration of sine of x from 0 to pi, which we see is approximately correct. So here is now an example for the Max Lloyd integration. Assume we have a signal x between 0 and 1, x is between 0 and 1, uniformly distributed, p of x is 1 on this integral, and we want to have two reconstruction values or code words, y, k, and hence we need three boundaries. Where b0 is 1, uh, 0, b2 is 1, and we need to find b1, right? So we start with some random initialization. We have the two reconstruction values, uh, choose them as 0.3 and 0.8, and then use the nearest neighbor rule. We get the b1 value as the middle between them as 0.55, and then we can compute the conditional expectation. So we use p of x equals 1. So then we have from 0 to 0.55 x dx is simply 0.55 squared divided by 2. Then the lower integral is 0.55 and then the result is 0.275. For y2, corresponding formulas, now just for the upper interval, and we get 0.775. 
Now we go back to the beginning, nearest neighbor. B1 is now the middle point between the two reconstruction values, is 0.525. And now the update of the Y case with the conditional expectations. Here we get the updated values and so on. And do it until it doesn't change much anymore. And th this should converge to Y1 equals 0.25 y2 equals 0.75 and b1 equals 0.5 and this is what we expected because we have a uniform distribution right so all the quantization intervals are equally distributed and have each the same size yeah the more interesting example hence is a non-uniform pdf like laplacian here we see a laplacian probability density function e to the minus 0.5 times magnitude of x, right? So here this is a more realistic example, for instance, for speech. We again take our random initialization, same points, nearest neighbor, same as before, but now the conditional expectation. So this becomes more tricky now because we have our non-uniform PDF. So here we can see our expectation over the interval of the lower interval from 0 to 0.55 x times p of x and here we have our Laplace distribution now. Um, instead of using our simple rectangular exp um, um, approximation that we saw before we can use the Python function psi pi integrate quad for integration. So this actually uses a little bit more sophisticated approximation, not just rectangulars, but actually triangles. So here we import quad. Then this is doing our integration quad. Here this lambda is a function which we de define inside the argument of quad. It defines a function of x to x times exponential of minus 0.5 times abs of x. Here are the integration boundaries from 0 to 0.55 and then actually in this one line we did the integration and we get the result 0.126 and so on. You can do the same for the denominator here and here we just need to integrate over the probability itself again using quad so here we again have this function, but not with x, just with exponential. And we get 0.48 and so on. Hence we can plug in the two numbers here and we get the result 0.26 for our reconstruction value y1. Similar for y2, we use quad again, we get the corresponding values for this upper interval now. And here's the reconstruction value y2, it's 0.76, right, and so on. So I don't want to continue and finish it here. Um, the result is not so obvious, but um, here you can easily use the quad function and just repeat. So that might be a good experiment for, um, to try what values you get if you repeat um, what values after convergence. So here you can actually also see that it can be worthwhile to encapsulate the iteration in a function because then it's easier to iterate. Then you can call uh, the function again and again until it doesn't change anymore and then you know you have a good value. Okay, so that's it for this lecture and uh, yeah, until next time, goodbye.